I would like to call to order the Berwick Select Board meeting for September 27th, 2022. The entire board is present along with the town manager and the town clerk, mem members of the public. And uh, I'd like to stand for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, we have our approval for our meeting minutes from September 13th, 2022. I make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. Uh, all right. Uh, any other comments, questions? Nothing? All right. All those in favor? Aye. No abstain. Yeah. And so that's four, four, one abstain. All right. uh, first, public comment. Good evening. I'm Tom Wright. I'm here tonight as a resident of Berwick, not as a select board member. On Wednesday, October 5th at 6 p.m., there will be a candidates forum, giving Berwick residents a chance to hear from candidates on where they stand on the issues. These have been held in past years, and they were a great help in introducing the candidates to the residents of Berwick. The candidates are given general topics ahead of time, and the questions are asked by a moderator. The candidate's participation in the forum is voluntary, and in the past, some have chosen not to attend. Unfortunately, this year, one candidate made it personal. Tom Levine posted on social media questioning the process, wanting specific questions and the names of people submitting them. In the past, the town clerk vetted the questions to be sure they were submitted by Burke residents and the moderator would then ask the question. Mr. Levine then goes on to malign the integrity of Burke community media, the director, Terry Wright, who happens to be my wife, and myself. He states he has long interacted with the usual suspects and there is too much opportunity to manipulate the intent of the forum. He calls it having a trust issue. And just as an aside, Tom, if you have having trust issues, they have workshops that you can work on those problems. <clears throat> what is his reasoning? As he states, Terry and I have an established alliance with the Democratic Party. In other words, we're registered Democrats. In my eight years on the select board, I have never once advocated for a democratic agenda or any agenda other than what I thought was the best for Berwick. In the more than nine years that Terry has been involved with Berwick Community Media, she has never been biased in how the station covers Berwick events. To vaguely make insinuations that we can't be trusted borders on defamation of character. He also makes the mistake of identifying me as the chair of the select board. I have not been chair for three months. If Mr. Levine cannot be bothered to at least watch the board meetings to know that I'm not chair, just how informed is he on the current events happening in Berwick? That is not a good look for somebody that wants to represent us in Augusta. Mr. Levine, if you are afraid to answer a few questions from your fellow residents, how are you going to react at the State House when a reporter shoves a microphone in your face? Are you going to complain they didn't get the questions ahead of time? Or perhaps it's just a trust issue. All right, any further public comment? All right, I will close the first public comment and go on to our first public hearing, which is for general assistance maximum and ordinance adoption. Um, 
basically, as I understand it, this is more or less a formality. Um, we uh, there have been some slight increases to the uh, general assistance. Um, we have to approve them, or we're not going to be able to get our full funding from the state for them, which is 70% of that of the general assistance. And uh, for the most part, I think the biggest increase is, you know, it's a few hundred dollars. I mean, it's a, it's a few percentage points, right? It's not. The, the biggest one is the maximum the electricity yep. increase, yeah. you know, up to 42%. And that's, you know, because of the ongoing problems we have with the price spikes. Yeah. Yeah, and for those that qualify, that's definitely going to be a huge help. And that's going to be uh, going up. Uh, well, we we predict it's going to be going up across the winter time, so it's going to be a, it's going to be a rough one. Um, but in general, general assistance has not never been a huge cost for the town, um, and is available to people who need it. Does anybody have any questions or input on general assistance in, uh, increasing their maximums? While we're talking about it, Noah, maybe we should tell people if they need assistance, who they should contact. Maybe. Yes, absolutely. If you need assistance, you should come to the town hall. Um, there are forms to fill out that you have to verify income and uh, other, uh, you know, like residency, things like that, in order to get the general assistance. Um, I've worked as a property manager. Some people that I, I've rented to have needed general assistance before. They had their landlords fill out the forms and things like that. Um, come down to the town hall and and you can get these forms from any of the people that are working in the um, in the town hall or you can ask for the town clerk and she can get them for you. Actually, uh, we have appointments on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Um, those are our typical appointment days. So anybody can call me or Val, my deputy, to set up an appointment. Um, if it's an emergency, we'll get you in quicker than Tuesday or Wednesday if need be. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Any other comments or questions about general assistance? Just one other comment. They did not um, update the um, the ordinance model yet. Uh, they're still working on that. So you can vote to accept that once it's revised tonight, or we can bring it back to another vote once it's completed. It's up to you. Do you have a deadline that you need it by? I need the uh, the maximums approved tonight because they go into effect October 1st. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion that we accept the general assistance ordinance maximums as presented. I second the motion. Any further comments? All those in favor? 5 0. Okay. That is taken care of. We have a report of committees from the Berwick Community Media. Good evening. Um, I wanted to kind of give you an opportunity to ask me any questions about the assessment and recommendations report that I've done up. Uh, this report was done up for a couple of reasons. One is that I'm looking at my years forward and how long I'm going to be here. And if somebody comes in after me, I want them to have a full report on what BCM currently has, what we're currently doing, the types of things that are, are uh, accomplished as far as who we work with for organizations and contact information. But I also wanted to make sure that we had some goals going forward. We met all of the 2014 goals. Um, which I'm really proud to say because that's why we've got this station and, and it's working the way it is right now. But there's still more that can be done. Um, one of the things that we're really looking at is how do we provide local news, um, a summary of meetings or some type of information on what's happening in Berwick on a weekly basis. The problem is manpower and money. 
Um, it's the same as if somebody were starting up a, a whole new program or a whole new newspaper. You've got to have personnel to do it. Uh, so that's one of the, the bigger goals. But there are some others in here that we're looking at as well. Um, do you have any questions on this? I don't have any specific questions, but um, as a recommendation, uh, I would reach out to um, some of the local community colleges or the universities. I mean, as far as USM, that they have a journalism school. There might be people that are willing to work for limited or no budget or, you know, a, a, a for college credit for, you know, um, I mean, they might not be a member of the community, but they might have an outside perspective that they can add. Um, reach out to maybe the high school as well if they have a journalism club. I have already club. done the high school yeah. several times. Just I nothing. haven't gotten anything from yeah. that. Um, yeah. But I like the college idea. Um, yeah, UNH is pretty close. Um, UNH has, has, has a media program too. Yeah. yeah. They, I mean, they'll do a lot for college credit, and I'm sure that it more than qualify. So that's um, a great idea. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Anyone else? You say in here one of your long term goals is a full time assistant. Is that long term, like in the next 10 one? years? So 10 years, that far Five out. to 10 years out. I'm not seeing, considering the, the Comcast fees, we've lost over $400 just in the first quarter this year. I'm not seeing that as a sustainable way to keep the operation going. Okay. Um, I just sent out 92 letters this morning to businesses in Berwick and nonprofits that we work with um, for donations and sponsorships. That's not going to be sustainable either. I, everybody and their brother is hitting up the same organizations. There's only so much money to go around. So there needs to be a sustainable <coughs> option for keeping it running. And until you have that, you can't really look at hiring another full-time person. Can, Ralph works 15 hours, and that's it. Um, yes. So okay. I'm Ralph gets paid 15 hours. He works 30 hours. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're absolutely correct. He does. If, if you were to advertise... Like a business advertise on the channel would charge, is that appropriate? Um, we can't do commercials. That's why it's called sponsorships. Like so we, we could, could we could take a sponsorship and then put your information up as you know sponsored by Salmon Falls Greenhouses, the Berwick yep. you know yep. selectman meetings okay. or something along that line. Yep. Um, and one of the other things I do is I put the sponsors. Um, in my web page with a link to the business web page so that they've got that link. I also show them on a slideshow every three hours thanking them as a sponsor. Okay, um, thank you, Terry. Yeah, I, I can't do ads per se because that's we're public just, that's, access. You know, that's the same thing, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so the sponsorships, it's so a matter of a donation. Is it is. It's, it's a donation toward helping to pay for whether it be the Selectman meeting or the Legion event or whatever it is. I mean, I, and I'm going to give you an example. We did a video over here, the Food Forest Garden video. I spent more than 20 hours editing that video. It came out to over $500 that it cost BCM to produce that one video. And that's the actual cost. Most um, broadcasting or stations that are going to do something are going to charge more than that for the profit piece. But we're nonprofit; we don't make a profit on anything. Um, so yeah, it's it's not cheap to produce these videos if you take into account the time involved. Um, and talking about the sponsorship, you know, and you're talking about the difference between sponsorships and commercials. If you watch any public television station yeah. now, yeah. is the sponsorships. Our commercials. Basically. The only thing we can't do. So we can say, you know, they provide this and these are their hours of operations and this is where they're located, but we can't say, come on down. That's where the limit is. The, the actual call to action can't be in there, but everything else can be in there. Um, so yes, that's, that's one of the ways that we're hoping to look at it. The other option is um, to actually charge for our time to, to some of the places that we do. And one of the things that South Portland does is they actually put together a bill for even the town departments. 
the bill has zeroed on the, the line to pay. It's zero, but it shows you exactly what it costs to produce that video in each case. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, that's not a bad idea at all. Yeah. You know, that way they have a better idea of the fact that they're getting all this free publicity and information sent out to yeah. people in town, um, but this is what it actually costs us to do it. So that's one of the other things. Anything, any other questions? You know, we do a monthly program, and if we could find a host for a weekly program, I'd be happy to guest appearance on there, and I can throw the host yep. all kinds of ideas for, for podcast episodes. Well, and that was the other thing, is thinking of a podcasting studio or something like that. Because um, yeah. a lot of like people don't host. want to be on video, but they don't mind talking behind something, right. you know. Yes. So I can think of right. dozens of episodes. Yeah. Department heads, community leaders. Yep. Find the host. Um, some of the other things I wanted to let you know is we've been handling a lot of Legion events. We covered a 5K road race on Sunday. We're doing their golf tournament, um, craft fair, and then obviously Veterans Day. Um, we released our new documentary, News Desert in a Small Town, um, which we showed at the library. We also went over to UNH and showed it to a retirement association over there with about 30 people. The feedback was fabulous. It's being shown in stations throughout Maine and all over the country right now, um, which is kind of neat. I'm going to be attending a drone academy. I'm looking to update my drone and get a bigger one so that we can do more with it. Um, my little teeny tiny one gets bounced around in the wind because it's so little. Um, but I think drones add a lot to our videos, and I like the look of them. Um, I'm taking a class on video streaming, um, simplifying, and archiving municipal meetings, um, looking at working with a Berwick for a lifetime on getting computers for elderly people who um, have no access to the outside so they can communicate with family members, order food to have it delivered, those type of things, and I'd give lessons on how to use those computers. Um, we joined the Falls Chamber of Commerce. Um, we've got a partnership working with them. We're going to be doing a PSA uh, for them to promote their programs and what they're doing. Um, my monthly newsletter comes out at the end of every month, which shows our new videos, um, public domain videos that are going to be showing each month, and then little special blurbs that we have on the last page. Um, Tom has already mentioned the kid in his forum. This will be our third one. Um, and it's always handled exactly the same. I do not have anything to do with other than setting it up, getting people in, and letting the moderator take over. Uh, and as chair for the Maine Community Media Association, we met with Governor Mills staff today with um, trying to find out what their objections might be to the bill that we're submitting to hopefully get us high definition, but to also put um, franchise agreements under the PUC. Uh, and the idea behind that is that municipalities don't have the money to fight these cable companies. So every time they violate part of the agreement, we just kind of go and they look at us and say, take us to court. And we know, don't have the money. The cost is too outrageous. It's yeah. too overwhelming. And, yeah. um, you know, the other piece is consumer services. I've heard a lot of people complaining about the fact that either their broadband isn't working or their cable isn't working, except they can't seem to get help online. Well, these are the type of things that the PUC could help us with. Um, so that's a bill that's being submitted by Maine Community Media Association, which I'm proud to say I am the chair. What do you think your thoughts are on that passing? I I think it's really going to depend on what happens in the change for the legislature and Senate. Uh, our bill previously passed overwhelmingly in both the House and Senate, yeah. and the governor vetoed it. Who? Uh, LePage? Uh, no, Mills. Mills. Mills vetoed it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why we wanted to meet with her staff to find out what are your objections? What, what can we do working together? to ensure consumer <laughs> protections, ensure municipality protections, and still cover those public access stations the way they need to be. What, did she give an answer why? Um, 
we didn't meet with her. We met with one of her aides, oh, yeah. and basically he's looking for more consumer protections in there. So we're going to review our bill again and go back and see what I we see. can modify in it to make sure that we've yeah. got those okay, good, in good. there. Um, so that was really good. Um, otherwise, I've we're really busy right now. We're, we're doing a lot. Have you looked, and, and I don't know if there's anything there or not, but... I know that there is a lot of money out there in ARPA funds, specifically at the state level, that they want to push down in reference to telecommunications. A lot of it's for expanding the broadband. Yeah, I knew that, I knew that but I didn't know if there was anything. And that's that one of the things that we keep talking about is the fact that there needs to be oversight on that. Yeah. There needs to be somebody who is protecting mm -hmm. these municipalities to make sure that when they're given a contract, that contract is followed. In several of the municipalities, they had contracts, and five years later, it hasn't been accomplished. And that was their deadline. And their recourse is take them to court, yeah. except yeah. they don't have the money to do that. Right, very prohibitive that way, yeah. You know, that's, that's how yeah. they work, unfortunately. Um, you know, they're great when you got that broadband and the yeah. cable, but something goes wrong and all of a sudden nobody wants to take responsibility. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, one more. Oh, sure. You do have a, a resident loaning program for equipment. How is that working? Have you had any issues with that? Have you had people take you up on it? No. Hmm. No. Okay. No. I just think that's a great opportunity. I've for published it in the newsletter several times. To, you know. We give lessons um, on how to use it. Um, so you, anyway. have had, you have had users in the past. You had a few musicians borrow. We did, stuff, yes. So yes. Not, not a lot. But I was just thinking, even like the Girl Scouts or the Boy Scouts, it's a great thinking, lesson. When Linda asked, something. I was going to say, what about the schools? Even though you yeah. talk about the high schools and in junior high. Schools have could, all their own stuff. Right. Okay. That's, I wasn't thinking because of that, yeah. but I was thinking like, Associations like you know Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, maybe the you know the library things. I like have that. done Girl Scout and Boy Scout mm -hmm. events in the past. Yeah. Um, when they tell me, I I don't have time to go through everything to figure out when it is. So yeah. when you tell me, I I usually can cover it. Um, but yeah, they're more than welcome to borrow the equipment. I only ask that they go through a lesson with me so they learn the setup, yeah. how to take care of it properly, that type of thing. Um, but yes, anyone, and it, there is no charge. It's simply you sign this form saying you've got it, you're responsible for it for such time, and you bring it back. Um, the only thing we ask is if you're recording with our equipment that you give us the video to go up on BCM. Right. Yeah. Because that's kind of the idea behind public access is you're creating content for this as well. So it's not for a private birthday party or you know, a, a wedding or something like that. It's for an event you're putting on. Yeah. So, okay. Anything else? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good question. Uh, next, we have a department report from Shannon. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Rogers. I am the new program coordinator for the rec department. Um, I wanted to come in tonight to make myself, my face known to you guys so that um, when there's issues, whether it be on social media or in person, I am a person that you can come to, um, anybody can come to, to get answers, to get specific questions um, answered. Um, a few of the things I'd like to go over tonight is um, some things that were seen on social media last week. Um, Apparently, we have some people complaining that uh, Angela and I were in Phoenix for an, a National Recreation and Park Association conference. Um, the reason that we were able to go to Phoenix is because we got a, or Angela got a $75,000 grant from M NRPA, which um, it's, it's a program that's supported by them and funding through mentoring opportunities for a youth initiative within the, uh, the Office of Juvenile Justice and De Delinquency Prevention, the Office of Justice Programs, and the U.S. Department of Justice. 
we have partnered with uh, Patrice Baker. She is the director of prevention programs at Pine Tree Institute. We've, um, they've, I can't say we. I've only been in the part in the department for three, three weeks. Um, they put this whole program together in order to receive this program um, or this grant money. There was a all day uh, session that we had to go to in Phoenix on Monday um, called ACES, um, and it was specifically for the five communities that have received this grant, the five communities in the Northeast that received this, this grant. $4,800 of that grant was specifically stipulated for travel. That would include our meals, that would include our plane tickets, and that would include our, um, our stay. We found an Airbnb that was definitely cheaper than hotels that we stayed at. Um, anything extra was on us. Um, it was a very, very busy week. We were going from 7 a.m. till 6 at night and then still had to get dinner. We learned a lot of information, stuff that we can bring back to our mentoring program that we currently have six mentors and six mentees that are starting to go through this program that where these, these little guys, um, 9 through 12, 12 year olds, really need the support. They don't have the adult support at home and um, we have a few, we know this program is going to take, take off. Um, just in the state of Maine alone, um, the city of Auburn, they received the grant as well. The city of Lewiston received the grant and we, we received the grant just here in the state of Maine. Um, so three out of the six were in Maine? From three Maine out of Maine? five. Yep. Oh, three out of five. Okay. Yep. And it, therefore the rural, com rural communities that are experience a huge Op opioid crisis and it's funded through the Department of Justice and NRPA um, so that's where we were last week um, I want to give some updates on the field I know there's been a lot of issues with um, what's not happening what people don't think are happening up there um, I am meeting with our lead project advisor, Ian Lacey, from Tom Irwin on Thursday. We have a three-hour meeting up at the field. We're going through the entire field together um, so that I know how things work up there. Um, yesterday, myself and James met with Roland Sear. Um, we are getting, we have 12 lights that are already purchased and on the stage. We're getting four of those up on the poles as a temporary lighting system right now. Um, two on each pole. Eventually all 12 will be up and it is um, down the road it is a feeling that we possibly have enough lights that we will be able to play some nighttime baseball. Um, as to the demolition of the playground, the, the courts, all of that stuff, um, Public Works had time in their schedule they offered to go up and pull things out for us, saving us money, um, where we could reallocate those funds that we weren't paying somebody to pull out. Um, there were many safety issues with our playground equipment. Um, there was, I mean, I, I have a whole list. I don't know how much you guys want to hear, but the, the main thing is we had to make it safe for the kids. And if you have screws sticking out of slides, if you have cracks in slides, and if you have um, spaces in slides where fingers or toes could get stuck, then that's, that's an issue. Um, yesterday, well, let me back up. So there's three phases to this program. Um, the phases go anywhere from 2022 to 2028. Um, what the public probably doesn't know is that in the first phase of this pro of this project, the building was slated to be torn down. It is an unsafe building. We can't store anything in it because of its structure. Um, that building was going to come down, and we were going to put up. They were going to put up flushable bathrooms, office space, and storage for parks and recs. What kind of a rec director would come in and say, yes, put me up a new building before we put up what, this, what the community needs? 
she opted to move that building to phase phase three. 2028 is when that building is slated to be finished. Um, we're sitting in a dungeon over there so that we can give the community the stuff that they deserve, the stuff that they want for these kids to be safe. Um, it's funny. It's, I just, it's funny you say you're sitting in the dungeon because that was the police <laughs> station in the cell back there when really that, building, that was. Yeah, yeah, that was the police station, and I believe your office there was the holding cell. Oh, really? Well, yes. Then it is the dungeon. Yes. <laughs> How long ago was that, Tom? Oh, that would have been in the 1980s or so. Yeah, because I only remember the police station remember being that. here, yeah. in the, in this. Um, because they, they moved over here and then they moved to the yeah the new Huzzy school. Huzzy school yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> another big thing that was safety issue up at the field is we were not in ADA compliance at all. Not even one percent were we in ADA compliance. We could not get somebody through any gate in a wheelchair. We had no safe parking for anybody with ADA. That through the a the American Disabilities Act. That's a huge fine for the, for the town. Um, if you look through Maine Municipality, uh, what is it? Uh, Maine Municipal Association, they would have all of that, in, that information. In the new structure that we got while we were in Phoenix, um, the new concept, it is completely ADA approved. Um, we have, so we're in phase, phase one. Our next step of phase one is um, we have the choice to either resurface or strip the minor league field, which is called the East Baseball Field. Um, we thought about stripping it down and putting in a softball field because we don't have a softball field. It would cost us more money to put in a softball field because we have to rip up the irrigation that's there, strip it down, put down new irrigation, and then put down the new surface. Um, so we opted not to do that to save ourselves money to just invest in what's there and take out the existing turf or grass, build up what needs to be built up, um, and put everything back down. So it will be ready for spring of ne next year. That will be laid down before fall. I mean before winter. Um, in that area as well, we're taking down three to four portions, sections of the gate, the fencing to put in a new gate. We're at 71 Sullivan Street. We are very close to the fire station. Um, studies have shown that that's gonna be the best area for an emergency exit. Emergency personnel to come in um, where they're right down, down the road. So that's being done before winter as well. Um, I know people are complaining that we have these two huge spots sitting over there for basketball courts and a pickleball and a tennis court. Um, talking to the paving company yesterday, those are going to be paved the end of October, beginning of November. In order to get that paved, we have to install our basketball hoops. Our basketball hoops were delivered last week. Again, while we were in Phoenix, they're sitting down on four huge pallets down at Pub Public Works. Um, I spoke to a gentleman today from a company who will install the hoops, and then in the spring he'll come back and he will seal coat and stripe all three courts, like a package deal. Um, I really don't have much more on the phase one. Um, there's been a lot of talk about a splash pad. Yes, we have a splash pad that is in the works. We made a lot of connections last week with um, the companies that install and design the splash pads. However, the splash pad is for phase two. And in these three books that we got as our studies, that I believe, I don't know if we have two or three copies of them. I don't know if you guys got copies of them. We got copies. We've got copies. Mm -hmm. But those are slated for 2025. That is what phase two. Um, so I do have a question. Sure. You mentioned that we didn't go back to it. Um, is, we understand we, we tore down the playground area because it was unsafe. Mm -hmm. When is it slated to go back up? Um, we are getting prices for those now. We are hoping to have them started when snow snow goes. So you're talking spring and next yes. year? Yes. Okay. Yep, that's included in phase one. Phase one is the playground equipment, the basketball courts, the tennis court, and the pickleball court. Okay. And the money's all set? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I've been asking James the last yeah, two, two days yeah. to make sure that... $100,000 was 
have a kid. No, I met with Angela this summer with Playground Company and then other, mm-hmm. other there's a third company. Um, so now that's in, in design. And, yep. So the money's money's in place. We have a hundred thousand dollars just for the playground equipment to be designed and installed. In, in um, it's 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 not that we ran out of money not to finish the ball field. The project got started earlier than what we had anticipated. The the playground equipment wasn't slated to be torn out until July of twenty two, this past July. But they were able to get people up there the end of April, beginning of May, from the town to save us money. Um, as for the building, I know people are up in arms because it, they don't have a place to store their sports equipment. It shouldn't be a place for sport uh, youth groups to store their sports equipment. That is property of the Berwick Rec Department, and we scramble for storage. We had to purchase a storage shed to put our stuff in because we didn't have the storage. We don't even we have very little storage on the stage for us to store our stuff for summer camp. Um, any of the kids' nights, the after-school programs, anything like that that we do. Um, but that's definitely something that will be talked about down down the road because that building isn't going to go up for a while. Um, I did go up there today. I'm making it a mission of mine right now until we hire a new director to go every day, um, either in the middle of the day or on my way home, to pick up trash because we are in, we do have it set up as a carry-in, carry-out policy. Um, today I picked up not even a half a bag of Walmart, a Walmart bag full of garbage. Um, so it seems to be. There are dumpsters on site. Yep, right? there's mm-hmm. two dumpsters, one in each parking lot. Okay, all right. Yep, there right. there is, and that's all I did was pick up the garbage, put it in a Walmart bag, and went and put it in in the in the dumpster. Okay. Um, and then from there today I went and checked on the basketball hoops, noticing to myself, oh, I need to call the mowers to see when the mowers are coming because the grass was really long and I knew I'd be getting a text message from football. On my way back from Public Works, the mowers were at the field mowing. Um, so I just want to, to be transparent with you guys so yep. that you know what's going on. I do have one more question. On. Sure. Um, following up, you mentioned that the entrance and exits, the aggress areas, were not ADA compliant. Are they now? They're no. not. No. So that's in the, the plan? The, Is that phase the, one or two? Um, that's going to be phase one, so in, in, one in the spring. Okay. The, the, the thing with the is gates too is too narrow, and it's also not like not feet. graded yeah. properly. Yeah. So like 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 I was I was there this weekend, and I was looking at it, and it's like the the fence posts are in concrete, and mm-hmm. the concrete is sticking out of the dirt yeah. because the dirt has been eroded away mm-hmm. on the Sullivan oh, side, and it's okay. like like yeah, I'm like I'm like we got to do something about this because yeah. this is yeah. just crazy. It, it, in <laughs> okay. in the future, it could be a very big problem for a small small town. Yeah. So. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Go. I was going to say, I have a few things, so if you want to go, go ahead. No, you... <laughs> and if I don't have answers for you, I will get them for you and give them to you. No, you. absolutely. And, and it's it's something I just wanted to make sure we were staying to the town, too, is if you look at the study, really Parks and Rec has been right on on time with everything that really is in that study that's been there. The challenge that Berwick has is the town thinks that Memorial Field or Memorial Field is Parks and Rec. So neighboring towns or any town that I've ever had that's gone through field structures or field changes like this, especially baseball and softball, and I've seen it in a few towns, I've actually had it personally be affected by it. We've had alternate ter- um, fields in the town to go to. So that whole area would be shut down for two seasons. You'd lose that field for two years. Right. Yeah. We in town have tried to find a way to navigate through it so that we wouldn't be losing baseball, so we wouldn't be losing sports down there right now. But if you think about it, if this was any other town, Memorial Field would have been shut down for two years, mm-hmm. right. and you would have moved over somewhere else. You want to look over at Dover. Either. Dover just did it to one of their softball fields. They took it down in 2020. We just got back on it this summer. Right. So, you know, really that's kudos to Parks and Rec with what we tried to do. I know it hasn't been ideal for for baseball. I know it's not ideal for the kids going through it right now, but right now, you guys kept them on the field, you know, and that's, and that's something that You're I want to be up here saying. And I can't take credit for that, she, but yes, Angela job. has done Listen an amazing job. Town so. complain and whatever, but you know what? She's done a good job. Yeah, so my, long, my long-term, I guess, challenge would be after we get to Memorial Field is really looking at where we have green space in town to expand, you know, soccer, softball, and baseball, yeah. and, and football, and given these alternate locations that we can, yeah. that we can utilize, because I think that is what's going to help the townspeople, especially as we grow in town, we get more kids, and we're going through that, yep. um, so that if we have to renovate a field like this going forward, we right. can do it and have minimal impact on the sports, where they don't feel like 
they're being forgotten because right. they're not. And and we see that. And like I said, I've, I've gone through that study back and forth from day one. I've walked that field from coming in here. I mean, I remember when I moved to Berwick and said, oh, I'm going to reach out to Parks and Rec and get on a softball team. What Parks and Rec? <laughs> you know, that that was, yeah. that's what it was. What you know, so <laughs> it was still not possible in town. So um, well, you move out of the big city, you come here I, and expect <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> you, you do. <laughs> you do, right? I know. I should have known better, right? Um, so... But, but really, I think that's, that's my stretch goal once, you know, we start moving from this is how do we expand parks in town so that we aren't having an impact. But, but for what you guys have done or what Angela's done, you know, it's definitely been, um, you know, kudos to trying to at least keep sports going through it. Now, I don't know if you guys are aware. I'm sure you are because you would have had to approve it. But um, we, got, we acquired that three acres. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's. I found out the other day that that's on the soccer end, the, like the soccer. End. So we're going to have another soccer field. We're going to turn what we have this way and put another one right next to it. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested, but I do. This is the concept markup that we got back while we were in Phoenix. Um, it's this is all phase phase one. Um, I can forward it to you guys if you Excellent. if you would yes, like yes, it, yes, um, yes. so you can see exactly um, what we've been through. We had to turn the courts. The courts were. In our first write up, the courts were the wrong way. Um, the splash pad was too big. The playground was too small. Um, so they got us. They got us what we needed right right back. Um, I would like to hold a. I talked to James about this yesterday. I would like to hold a public forum within the next couple weeks. Um, I don't know if this space will be big enough for it, uh, but invite the public to come in. Ask questions. We could always do it upstairs as well. Um, mm -hmm. I know you get a maximum of like 30 people in here, and it gets yeah, kind of crowded um, with all the activity going on on social media. I would think more than 30 people would be here, but I don't know. Um, you would think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you would. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, just to answer questions, give feedback. No, yeah. I think that's a great idea. I think getting being available. Mm -hmm. readily for people is I, I definitely feel like you'd get some feedback um i don't know it i i you know some people you know they're very passionate about it some yep. people you know they just you know backseat quarterbacks and you know it's like so it's hard to tell but um i definitely feel like you should get reaching out to the public and asking you know what their you know what their feelings are about it mm -hmm. is is uh, you'll, you'll definitely get some some ideas right um but uh, I, the the whole revamping, the whole phases and everything like that, part of that was done because we did do public forums and reaching mm -hmm. out to people and finding out what they wanted, what they wanted to see in town, um, you know, and largely what we wanted to improve upon in terms of our recreation space. Yep. So reaching out again, hopefully, you know, hasn't changed too much. <laughs> right. Um, so as the as the new program director, and yeah, I mean, um, uh, is there um, a list of new programs that you're 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 thinking about putting into place? Or? I'm thinking of, but um, <clears throat> I've only been on my own for two two days. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've done a lot with the field for these past two days. I've sent James a lot of emails in the last two days. Um, I I have to see what the budget is. Yeah for these programs. I want to get some um, teen programs. I want to do some babysitting, some CPR classes for those teens. Um, they're kind of a forgotten group right now. Well, I mean, I'll take a CPR class. You know, a CPR <laughs> class. I, mean, I haven't done it in 10 years, but I'll do it. But, um, yeah, the, um, I mean, like, they, the, the, the parks in Iraq was doing, like, movie nights for, like, yep. you know, five, ten-year-olds or whatever. That was Yep, uh, we still that have that really going good. on. It's yep. the third Friday of every month. Um, we canceled it last week because we only had one person sign, signed up. Yeah. Um, we just gave her credit for a following. But we, all, all the way through March, we have our movies all picked out and advertised. Yep. Um, and we have, uh, in about two months, we have, three months, we have the, we have the parade, the, mm -hmm. the Christmas parade, things like that. Um, we have Trunk or Treat coming up on the 29th. That's true. I always forget about Trunk or yep. Treat. <laughs> that <laughs> is on the website on myrec.com to register for. And that's for. the 30th? 20, 29th. The We're 20th. doing it the Saturday night as the Trunk, trunk or Treat. Okay. That way kids can still tr trick or treat on the okay. 30th if, if they want. That's that's a great idea. I love yep. it. Um, 
because I we, we did we did both last year. We, were, we went trick or treating, and then my wife took my daughter mm-hmm. to the trunk or treat, and I went home with the other kids because they were already tired, you know. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's. And we got good feedback for that already. We got the police department on board. We got the fire department on board. Nice. Um, now, since it's just you know you mainly right now in the parks department, um, and we're obviously looking for a new director and things like mm-hmm. that, uh, is there any support? that you need that the board can provide or is it just going to be get a good director in as soon as possible? Um, James said he's getting some applications for the director um, as we speak so we're just going with that. Um, I would love to reach out to you guys if I have any issues, questions, problems, um, you, ideas, anything. You're welcome to come to every meeting and give updates, or you're welcome to send emails to any of us, yeah. all of us. Yeah. You can send it to all six of us <laughs> at the same time, you know, so we can all be in the loop. It's, you know, we're, we're here to, to work and improve the town all together, so let us know. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, unfinished business, we have the field user agreement. Let me just make a quick note. I um, had the user agreement forwarded to me um, about last week. I just want to say it's, I, I've had a chance to review it. Um, the, this, it looks great. Uh, Tom Irwin, uh, attorney, is looking over the draft. So I think we'll probably see a next iteration in the next few weeks. Okay. Did you guys all get a copy of that? Yeah, um, I haven't forwarded it. Yeah, okay. not this most recent version. Um, all right, uh, town manager report. All right, um, we'll have bid documents soon for the drainage project that will get from the edge to the Salmon Falls River. As you can see outside, they're actually starting to put in the 60-inch pipe. That's the pipe, the large pipe you see outside. Um, and that, that's the water that comes down Pine Hill. It's also the stream that's piped under the site, and it outfalls um, just on the other side of Gateway Gas's property, right down the, the dam. Um, it'll help with. Wilson's so they're not. It's not in his Cantwell's contract then, right now. To no, it's not. Uh, we we're gonna get bid, bid documents and put out the project to bid. And if they're interested, if they're already mobilized, they may be able to provide a. Uh, and they may yeah. be able to provide a cost advantage, so we'll see um, if they're interested in, in bidding. The cost to replace the vertical wheelchair lift, it's $38,000. Place to replace, not repair. Right. It's to completely, completely replace it. Uh, we had, uh, just to go back a little bit, we had some cost estimates we hope to be able to put in a vertical lift but uh, what we are led to believe I want to say or what I've understood I guess was that a vertical lift is different than an elevator mm-hmm. but um, with our stairwell and what's needed to allow for a vertical lift to work you pretty much have to install almost like a vertical or um, an elevator sure. shaft yeah. Yeah. which that's a couple hundred thousand dollars you know, you're, it doesn't matter what side you eat the boiled egg from. It's, it's all the same at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, so in this case, it's, it replaces um, the same type of idea that's in the town hall now, just makes it brand new. We know that um, we're going to have maintenance. Uh, we're just going to work that into um, what we do and just make sure that we have it available as much as possible and for the big events. Is this something that you think that we should try to get done this year or budget into next year? It's already, we already have a budget. We budgeted, um, I think, at least $70,000. 75000 something, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really much. To put a lift it's this, right? It's that, yeah. 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 Okay, great. I had a inquiry. Someone's interested in buying um, one acre parcel off Durant Road. I mean, I don't, I don't know if the board is interested in entertaining something like that. The property is assessed for $58,900. Um, it's probably, we own it. I, I don't, I, I'm only speculating. It might be 
road adjustments or something, and they're just an extra piece. That, that yep. the piece right at the end of Durant Road where it comes out on Diamond Hill. I can get you the exact. Yeah, it's a little triangular provided. piece. It right is there. a triangle. Yep. Yeah. How much it's, is there? Uh, it, it if it's a piece, I know it's right where Durant Road comes on to Diamond Hill right, Road. Right. And if you look at, at if, no, I was up there just recently. Is it looks like it was originally the road was originally meant to go straight through there, but for some uh, reason they took no, a little left hand turn, and there's this little triangular piece of land there that I didn't know until last year that Burrow owned it. You know, is, uh, yeah, we should sell it. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, been, it's, it's been there since the 1880s. <laughs> of course it is. So, yeah, we can, I mean, what, do you think there's any community use for it? I not for the town that, that I can see. Yeah. You know, is you yeah, know, one acre's it, not a lot to do anything on. So. I would yeah. say it's it's an offer worth entertaining. Get us the details on it, and we'll yeah. take a look. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. imagine it's the guy who bought the Goodrich property there. I believe yeah. so. Yeah. It is the abutter to the right. Land. Yeah, yeah that, right. that makes sense. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I thought we should just it. offer to sell it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stretch, stretch the property right. line out. Yeah. yeah. School field. We have a letter yeah. from yeah. Mike yeah. Hennessy of House of Hope. Yeah. He's asking um, for some sort of relief in his building permit. I've proposed a permanent change to the cost recovery fee schedule, something for discussion purposes. Um, I just threw three cents out there per square foot as a, a starting point, and I don't know if that's uh, something that would be equitable or something we'd be interested in doing. Uh, it would be only for 501c3 charitable organizations, and um, again, it'd be a permanent change to the cost recovery fee schedule. How many of those types of organizations do we have in Berwick? Not I, any? I, mean, I, I was trying to think earlier, and other than like the Methodist Church and yeah. some places like that, I can't really think of any other organization that owns anything in Burroughs like that. Okay. My only argument would be that three cents is too low, and that it should probably be closer to ten to twelve cents. Um, just because, even though it's a new building and it's for a charitable organization that it still requires code, it still requires inspections, it still requires planning, the planning board, and everybody else to be involved, and those positions come with time and cost, um, and it's just you know, more fair to other people that want to build in town as well. Um, but otherwise, the idea of carving out a permanent um, change specifically for charitable organizations makes sense, because it doesn't doesn't single out the single the particular right. organization. It doesn't leave us open to hearing appeals from every organization that comes in who wants a slightly better deal. Right. Um, so overall, I'd be in favor of it if it was in the ten to twelve cents range. Anybody yeah, else I, want? I, I agree with Noah there. No. Um, again, I, th I think it cost it covers the cost of of the town and what what goes into it. At the same time, we are. Helping out nonprofits in town by by giving them a reduced fee. Um, yeah, the same thing. I think three cents is a little low. And, and when I saw it, I think the first time I was sitting right on that that ten, possibly cutting it in half, going to twelve is fine with me. So, yeah, I'm not going with that too. Could we hear from code enforcement <laughs> since she's sitting there? <laughs> I knew I'd get you up here sooner or later. Oh, darn it, <laughs> Jenny McCabe, code enforcement officer for the town of Berwick. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, well, it is you know, is what are your feelings? On it? As Noah said, you know, we do incur costs, so is you know, your your inspections, yes, you go in the paperwork and all that, is um, at you know, say ten cents per square foot, would that be enough to cover the costs? Well, any kind of building or structure that goes up obviously needs multiple inspections. Um, I don't know if you want to talk on a broad view of it, um, or if you want to talk about this project. Um, how do you want to go? I broad view. Yeah, broad I want to look at something that we're going to do. Yeah, we're sure. going to do it. And how it's going to apply if there are other 501c companies? So not specifically to them, but right. any that could fall into the town. Yeah, so um, there's two different kind of buildings that go up with commercial spaces big. Um, some are metal and some are stick built. Um, the metal buildings obviously require less inspection. Someone comes in, they pour, you know, the footings, the foundation. We have to inspect twice for that. 
Um, if there's drainage that's put around the building, which we require here in Berwick, that's another inspection with a waterproofing, so that's three. And then um, if it's a metal building, we inspect that. Once it's erected, it's all put in place, we check for screw holes or all that. We make sure it's properly put up. Uh, SIG built a little bit different. We do a full framing inspection and then we go ahead and do a um, plumbing inspection, rough plumbing. Then we do an insulation inspection. We'll do a rough plumbing on a metal building too. And then we'll do an insulation inspection and then we'll do a final inspection. So I don't think that, I, I think that um, there's still, you know, a full thing of work here. Um, so I agree with what Noah's saying actually. Um, Still, you know, we still do our job. We still have to do stormwater inspections and other inspections too that go along with it. It's, I would say, more involved than a normal residential house usually. So, ten ten to twelve cents sounds reasonable. Yeah. Just, yeah. You know, cover our costs and make sure that you know everything's get covered. Yeah. Are you good with me? Am I? I think yes. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we want to make a motion, or do we want to continue this discussion at a later time? I mean, this is part of the town manager's report, so it's not really on the agenda. So, yeah, I think we've given him feedback. Now we can yeah. go back, plug in the ten or twelve cents there, yep. and then come back with an actual yep. thing yeah. to be yeah. voted on. And we'll we'll put that under new business next meeting or something yep. like that. Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. Anything else for the town manager report? I'll just add in um, another piece I added into the cost recovery schedule is a site plan amendment. Yep. She's adding in $100. We just haven't had anything in there. Site plan amendment. Perfect. And that completes it. Thank you. All right. Uh, Second communications, there are none. Improvement, approval of the accounts payable. We have a payroll warrant number 18 in the amount of $73,850.64 from September 22nd, 2022. We have a payroll warrant number 19, $75,086.76 from September 29th, 2022. And we have an accounts payable warrant number 20, $326,423.87 from September 27th. I make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Bills paid. Um, new business, auto graveyard annual permits. We have two um, uh, already existing uh, permits that are up for renewal. The uh, Southern New Hampshire Hydro Hydroelectric Development Corporation and Berwick Iron and Metal Recycling Inc. Patty, is there anything you want to add? Uh, just that Jen, our code officer, had gone to inspect all three of the uh, graveyards we have in Berwick. Um, and these two, Southern New Hampshire and Berwick Iron and Metal, have returned their application with their $50 permit fee, so they're set to be approved by the board. Um, the other one is um, Vern Larkin's place, so we're working on getting his application back, but he did pass Jen's inspection. So that will come at a future date before you. All right, terrific. I will hear motions. I'll make a motion that we renew the auto graveyard permit for Southern New Hampshire Hydroelectric Development Corporation and Berwick Iron and Metal Recycling, Inc. Should they be separate? Uh, probably not. Okay. It's fine to have them combined. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. I second the if, motion. If it was a new, new permit, yeah, we probably wouldn't okay. have to do them. But. All right. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Those are renewed. Um, we have no quick claim deeds, no abatements. A second public comment. Okay, and uh, we have an executive session tonight uh, for discussion of personnel matters. Uh, no decisions will be made into that, so we will be 
going out into the meet that and not coming back. Is there any other business or non-agenda items that anybody wants to bring up? All right, terrific. Then I will make the motion that we uh, enter executive session under Title 14056A for the discussion of personnel. Twice. Yes, <laughs> X2. I'll second that. All those in favor? All right, executive session. <laughs>